Hello everyone, this is Mohammed Safar. I am a mechanical engineer. I am a assistant professor in a mechanical engineering department. Uh, I am working at Common Engineering College, Halabal. And today uh, we are going to discuss about the subject power generation. It is a eighth semester subject, and the subject code is Demi Three. So in the last lecture we have discussed about the steam turbine. We have done the classification, and today in this lecture we are going to discuss about the Compounding of a steam turbine. So let's start. So here is the method of reducing rotor speed, which is also called compounding. As you know, that rotor speed is very much important. Okay, so steam generation and production electricity is slightly proportional to its uh, rotor speed. So we need to slow down the speed. As you know, that practically the speed of the rotor blades and shaft is very much high. That's about 30,000 rpm. In this ratio, this is not practical use. In this <coughs> type of speed, in this high speed, we can't generate electricity and we can't use for our purpose. That's why, to reducing this speed, we are using some method. That's why, compounding our method. Here, here is therefore essential to incorporate some improvement for practical use and also to achieve high performance, right? So this is possible by making use of more power or sorts of nozzle rotor. In a key to the shaft to either <coughs> the steam pressure or the jet velocity is observed by the turbine in a stage. This is called compounding of turbine. Right? So, the high rotation speed of the turbine can be reduced by the following method of compounding first, the velocity compounding, second, the pressure compounding, and third is the basic uh, both combination of both that is, pressure compounding and velocity compounding. Okay, so first of all, we are going to discuss about the velocity compounding. Here is a systematic arrangement, or we can say that a schematic view of the velocity compounding. Done. How we done here the compounding is that we are using the velocity through sets of plates, and here, and if you do uh, see in a turbine, a steam turbine, they see there are basically two types of plates are there. First is moving blade and Second is fixed plates are there. In a velocity compound, you can see the variation of pressure and velocity diagram are there. And first of all, uh, first stage is nozzle, we can say. And after the nozzle, we are fitting some moving blade, and after fixed blade and moving blade. There is a series of blades are there. And first, pressure of entering, as we see that nozzle and the nozzle entering, the velocity in the nozzle velocity increases, but pressure decreases, you can see. But moving blade, fixed blade and when we go to the moving blade the pressure is <coughs> velocity is decreasing right in the moving blade pressure velocity decreasing and when we go to fixed blade velocity constant when moving blade after the velocity decreasing and finally we are getting the velocity that's a loss of velocity and if we discuss about the pressure then we know that in the nozzle pressure is reducing but Pressure is constant over the moving blade fixed when only because it's a water type of turbine, impulse turbine. As you know, that in an impulse turbine, pressure is constant. So, here the graphical representation. Next, here the same thing which we have, I have told you about this it consists of sets of nozzle and a few rows of moving blades, which are fixed on the shaft and more fixed blade are attached to the vessel. Right? As shown in the figure, two rows of moving blades are separated by the row of fixed blade. The high velocity steam enters the first row of moving blade where some portion of the velocity is absorbed. Then it enters into the wing of fixed blades. Whereas the direction of the steam changes to suit the second row of moving blades. There is no change in the velocity as the steam passes for the fixed blade. The steam passes on the second row of moving blades as the velocity is further reduced. There is a fall in the velocity of course every time where the steam passes for the row of moving blades. The steam does leave the turbine with a low velocity. The variation of pressure and the velocity of the steam as it passes for the moving and a fixed blade is shown in a figure. It is clear from the figure that the pressure drop takes place in a nozzle and there is no pressure drop clause according to the moving blade and fixed blade. This method of velocity compounding is called the Curtis turbine and after it was proposed by C. G. Curtis. Because this is proposed by and this is developed by the C. G. Curtis, that's why it is also called the velocity compounding steam turbine also called Curtis turbine. We need to remove the velocity compounding with Curtis turbine. 
to see the advantage they are uh, following advantage or they are first is i'm going to have less number of stages hence less initial cost okay so we are using uh, as compared to other the bands we are cost is less and next is it's going to require less space third is the system is viable and uh, easy to operate right next is fall of pressure in the nose are considerably so the turbine is that need work high pressure sounding and the turbine has need to be very strong right? uh, if you see the disadvantages are there first more friction losses due to very high velocity in the nose right losses are there that's why velocity is less efficiency is less less efficiency because the sub blade velocity the blade is not optimum right power development the later is only factor of low pressure is still a material cost right so we are going to complete about the pressure components in the way uh, it's a very important our next lecture we are going to discuss about the velocity components so thanks for this lecture